We're going to start again. And as I said, we're on number 13 now. A type of cuckoo clock keeps time by having a mass bouncing on a spring, usually something cute like a cherub in a chair. What force constant is needed to produce a period of half a second? Let's put these down. Period is going to be half a second. And the mass is 0 0.015. So the mass is equal to 0 0.0150 kilograms. So the question here is what is the, the constant, the mass constant? And as I said, one of the key uh, formulas is the period is going to be equal to 2 pi times the square root of the mass over the mass con or the spring constant. Now, if you rearrange this, you get 2 pi times the period. That's moving this over to the, or excuse me, let me do that. 2 pi divided by the and then you're left with the square root of this, so if you square both sides, you get mass over k. And if you move k over here and then the, everything else over there, you end up with the mass times, this would be the inverse of this, 2 pi over t and this whole thing squared over here. And so if now you, then you take that, k is equal to the mass 0 0.0150 times 2 pi over the period, which is 0 0.5 seconds squared. And if you do that math, you get 2.37 newtons per meter. And so that's that's number number 13. The next problem um, on the list is number 15. Number 15 states a 0 0.5 kilogram mass. Always write these numbers down first because these are what you know. Is suspended from a spring oscillating with a period of one. How much mass must be added to the object to change the period? So the new period you want is 0 0.20 seconds. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. Now the way I did this originally um, is I first I basically plug these numbers into this equation again because the, the manipulation is the same and got the spring constant and then put the new period that I wanted in and figured out the mass, the new mass. And so if you do that, so this is one way you can do it. You know that K is going to be equal to the mass, so that's going to be 0 0.500 now, times 2 pi over the period you know, which is 1.5 seconds, that's squared. And if you calculate this period, or this K, you get it, or the K is equal to 8.77 newtons per meter. Okay, then you take this, and now you solve this equation again, this equation, let's write this equation down again, but now, instead of solving for K, because we know K now, we're going to solve for a new M with a new period. Okay, so the manipulation is very similar, you end up with this, squared, but now you've got m over k, so you just multiply this side by k. We'll take this out now, and that's going to give you a new m. So you put the numbers in, you get 8.99, 8.77, excuse me, times 2 now, divided by 2 pi, squared, and that's going to be 0 0.889 sec, um, kilograms. So if you, if you have a larger mass, now the other way you can do this problem is you can take, you can say that 
T1 over T2, what does that equal? Well, if you put T1 in here, that's going to be 2 pi square root of m over m1 over k divided by 2 pi square root of m2 over k. And all this, this stuff cancels out, and you end up with T1 over T2 is equal to the square root of m1 over m2. And then you, you know this is 1.5, you know this is 2, and you know this is 0 0.5. And so you can do this math and you should get the same answer here. And it's a little bit simpler and we'll be using this equation again in the near future. All right, number 18. Number 18 says, Number 18 says, a diver on a diving board is undergoing a simple harmonic motion. Her mass is 55.0 kilograms. And the period of motion is T is equal to 0 0.800 seconds. I'm going to put ones in here because I think I'm going to need them. The next diver, who is a male, he oscillates at 1.05 seconds. So the question is, is what is his mass? Okay, that's why I showed you this, because I think this is a simpler way of doing this, this problem. You end up with um, 0 0.800 divided by 1.05 is equal to the square root of 55.0 over his mass. If you square both sides, you get 0 0.800 divided by 1.05 squared, and that's going to equal 55 over m, his mass. You multiply this and then move this over here and you end up with 55 times 1.05 over 0 0.8 squared is equal to his mass <clears throat> and you get the answer which is 94.7 kilograms kind of a big dude okay moving right along the next problem is number nine. Um, yes, number nineteen. Number nineteen says: Suppose a diving board with no one on it bounces up and down with a harmonic motion frequency. And don't get fooled by that. Remember, that's one over the period. The board has the effective mass of ten. 0 0.0 kilograms. What is the frequency of a simple harmonic motion if a 75 kilogram diver, so the mass 2 is going to be this plus the 75, so that's going to be 85 kilograms. Okay, <clears throat> now you can work, you can either convert this to period, because you have this stuff up here, might make it easier, or, and then convert it back to frequency, or you can use the new, the frequency equation, which is, which is F is equal to 1 over 2 pi square root of K over N, okay? Now, personally, because I've got all this up here, that's what I did. In other words, I said... <clears throat> T1 over T2 is equal to the square root of M1 over M2. So F1 is equal to 1 over T1. So I said that T1 is equal to 1 quarter, which is 0 0.250 seconds. Okay. And then I just put this in here because it, it's the same, the same idea. You have 
but in this case you're going to have t t2 well so let's let's square both sides so you have t1 over t2 squared is equal to m1 over m2 and you move you multiply t2 over here and then move this over here so you got t1 times squared times t1 squared times um, m2 over m1 is equal to t2 squared so t2 is going to equal the square root of that the square root of t1 squared times m2 over m1 so let's put these numbers in here t1 is 0, 0 0.25 0 squared m2 is 85 m1 is 10 and then we're going to take the square root of all of that and that's going to equal t2 then all you have to once you get this is t2 then all you have to do is is say f2 which is what we actually want to know is 1 over t2 and so you just take this whole thing and say 1 over this 1 over the square root of 0 0.25 squared times 85 over 10 you do this math and then and then whatever you get in this in this box you just take and reverse it and it makes it the, the, the new frequency is going to be 1.37 Hertz now if that seemed confusing to you you can come back up here if all that seemed confusing the other way you can do this problem is you can come back up here and you can say f1 over f2 is equal to 1 over is equal to 1 over 2 pi square root of k over m1 divided by 1 over 2 pi the square root of k over m2 now all this crap cancels out and what you're left with is <clears throat> f1 over f2 is equal to the square root of m2 over m1 just the opposite of this up here and so f2 is going to equal f1 times the square root of m1 over m2 and then just put the numbers in again you end up with 4 times the square root of 10 over 85 equals and this might have been overall easier to to handle and you end up with the same answer 1.37 hertz okay so that's number what number was that 19 when we come back for the third installment we will start with number 21